Jonathan Ward. Dr. Ward is the author of China's Vision of Victory. He has joined me before. Dr. Ward, welcome back. Good to have you on The Hugh Hewitt Show. Good morning, Hugh. It's great to be back. I, uh, I've been telling everyone that they've got to read your book. I've got it in front of me. And I was reading it on the airplane when a wonderful steward asked me, why is this book? You know, because I wrote, I took Alaska both ways over the last week. I had it in both trips. I said, well, this is the most concise summary of Kissinger's On China, Pillsbury's 100-Year Marathon, Graham Allison's Thucydides Trap. Uh, did you intend to kind of put it all in one place and make it accessible for the average person? I wanted Americans to understand what's going on here. I was really worried that we wouldn't. And if you can't grasp this um, at a very broad level, we're not going to have the national will and the national awareness to win this contest. But above all, I wanted to put Communist Party and documents in front of the reader so people can see and hear um, the Communist Party in their own words. I mean, we shouldn't be interpreting this. So we should just be listening to what they've had to say. We would have gotten this right 20 years ago if we'd been paying attention. Well, it is pretty remarkable. You do have the goods and you do use their own words and Chairman Z, Xi's own words. What did you make of Secretary Pompeo's speech last week at the Nixon Foundation? I thought it was a great speech. It was a landmark speech. It had to be done, um, you know, a real bookend on 40 years of strategy that I think we all can recognize has been a failure now. I mean, you look around the world today and the idea that engaging with China, you know, making them more powerful, um, you know, technologically, economically, um, in, in every regard is going to be good for the United States. I mean, of course, that's not going to be good for us. It's created a, a very dangerous superpower that's in the midst of committing human rights atrocities and threatening its neighbors with its militaries. I mean, what could possibly be worse than that? So, um, you know, I thought the speech was, was great. Um, also loved his part about the alliance uh, for democracies. I mean, that was one of the key things that I proposed in China's vision of victory. We have to bring the democratic world together to defeat the People's Republic of China. You know, my first and my last two questions were on this point. Uh, on the first question, I said we originally went with China because we had to defeat the Soviet Union. Then we stuck with China after the Soviet Union went away. That was the mistake. But at mm -hmm. the end, I asked him whether or not like George Marshall making his appeal for a league of, of free countries, he would be successful because do people trust us? Jonathan Ward, do you think the world will trust the Joe Biden administration to be tough on China? I don't know. I mean, I think countries at this point are all making their own assessments. And you see new alignments coming together. Um, you know, the Australians get this, the Japanese get this, India, you know, just had troops killed in the Himalayas. So I think with or without American leadership, you're going to see a whole lot of Asia um, coming together around the problem of China. And we're going to have to provide that leadership. Um, so, you know, I mean, the, the, it depends on who his advisors are. I mean, it's, it's hard to say. Let me ask you about how, what one question I had repeatedly, how did they let you run around China for 10 years or however long you were in China? <laughs> how long were you in China for? Um, I spent two years uh, basically backpacking around China, but I was visiting China, you know, other visits as well, um, over a, let's say, 10-year period between Oxford so, and... How did they let you do that? Were they not aware of your attitude or your point of view, or was your attitude evolving and they did not have the ability to know it? My point of view was evolving. I mean, that's how I found my way to this uh, situation. I mean, when I was a 22-year-old, I was going around Xinjiang and Tibet, which are two region regions that have been crushed by the CCP. It's where they have the concentration camps now. You know, I, I, I had, you know, things like being detained by Chinese paratroopers, having to hide, um, you know, from the PLA uh, checkpoints and stuff. So you, you could not do what I did as a 22, 23-year-old um, and, and onwards today. Um, you know, and you'll never be able to do it again. That's the other thing. I mean, you couldn't do it five years ago. I, I was very uh, lucky and somewhat skilled. In order are, to... are you welcome in China now, Dr. Ward? I haven't, haven't tested that, but no. I think, I think at this point it would be risky enough anyway for um, Americans to be going to Hong Kong and, and China without the expectation that you could get caught up in something. Have you been subject to any sort of harassment or has your computer programming been hacked at all? Uh, you know, that's it's probably likely that there's some hacking going on. Uh, only the China Daily has harassed me. So I OK, okay. let me ask you about uh, pages 68 and 69. This is in the, the most central chapter of uh, China's vision for victory, which is blue national soil. Uh, China's appetite for military confrontation below the threshold of violence remains high. I think that is true. And I think people need to understand what that means. Would you unpack that for people? Sure. I mean, they're willing to use um, every aspect of national power to harass, coerce, um, outmaneuver, and, and uh, defeat those that they see as adversaries. And that's pretty much everybody uh, in, in, the, 
in Asia and us. And I think if you look at um, you know, what's going on between China and America today, I mean, everything short of the military is being used against us. Um, you're talking about uh, coordinated uh, intellectual property theft, cyber attacks that are going to be nonstop or cyber hacking. Um, you know, fentanyl, I think, is, is, is clearly a conscious effort on some level. Um, you know, the, the, the virus itself, the, allowing that to, to spread in such a way that, you know, we're experiencing system shock in the United States. It's not just our economy, it's our education system. Even everything is being um, impacted by an environment that has been uh, created by the Communist Party. And so, Jonathan, um, with, without, being, without being paranoid, was there a yeah. moment, do you think, that the general secretary said, oh, we have the virus, it's, it's escaping around the world, but in a way that won't hurt us as much as if it gets around the world because we've already got it. Do you think there was actually a conscious decision by the general secretary to allow that to happen? I, I think what we understand already is, is that, you know, I mean, people are allowed to tra travel outside of China in mass and they knew um, obviously what this thing was on some level. I mean, they were in the process of covering that up, but they certainly let the world catch this thing. I mean, that's, I, I think, um, you know, known to be true. Uh, you know, what we don't know is is what precisely is the nature of, of the virus's origins. And we're not going to know because you're not going to. We're have, not. Um, you know, we're never going to know that. So. We're also not going to know what they were doing out of the Houston consulate. And I, I'm curious what you thought that signified on the part of the United States that we shut down that particular consulate and what you read into the news stories around what was going on in that particular consulate. Um, I, I mean, what I heard was that it had to do with, with um, you know, espionage surrounding the virus, uh, you know, vaccines and such. I'm, I'm not sure exactly if that's true. Um, you know, obviously, as has been said, the, the most worrying, um, you know, activity out of a Chinese consulate is going to be in San Francisco, where they're busy, uh, you know, spying on Silicon Valley. I mean, that's the one that everybody needs to understand. Look, that's the, 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 the epicenter, I think, of uh, Chinese espionage in the U.S. But uh, the question of if, if we were to close that down, then we might, they might retaliate in a more significant way. So trading uh, Houston for, for Wuhan, uh, excuse me, for, uh, you know, it's, it's, that's sort of less consequential than losing Hong Kong. Let's say. Let me try again. I'm, I'm trying to drive home the American public. Cut number 60 uh, on page 69, you write. Mm -hmm. It has recently been estimated that China's military has sent over 2,000 military-affiliated scientists abroad to the U.S., U.K., Canada, Australia, and Germany in order to train in science and technology. Now, you could write that in a benign way. Look, we got lots of transfer programs going on. Or you could write it the way you did, which is these are PLA uh, operatives. Why should we understand it your way and not the, oh, it's the Rotary Exchange? Well, I mean, there was a landmark study that, um, you know, put that out there in about 2017. And it just, it, people didn't know that. Um, so this was from an Australian policy institute, um, a researcher there identified this this massive use of, of PLA officers to go to universities, set up, you know, participate in science programs and, and you know, things that have uh, potential uh, military use ultimately to improve their capabilities. So, so we have to understand how they're using um, our societies. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, civil military fusion in China is is really the, 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 the core issue that matters in that regard. I mean, they're converting any military, uh, excuse me, any, any civilian industry or technology into military power in order to build a military that can defeat the United States and other, um, you know, nations. And, and they're doing all of this through integrating with our uh, country and even our companies. I mean, they're trying to, to suck up every little bit of advantage they can get to pull it all together and to build a superior force. So, are, you a, um, are you a watcher of Star Trek, Dr. Ward? Uh, only Star Wars. Star Wars. Uh, Star Trek has the, the villain, the Borg, and the Borg mm -hmm. just absorbs everything. And when I got done with China's vision for victory, I thought, they're the Borg. They just want to <laughs> absorb everything. And I'm not really sure if I'm unaware of the scale of Chinese espionage and Chinese ambition, then I, the whole country has to be unaware of the scale. Do you think that's fair that we are still, even after Two speeches by the vice president, National Security Advisor Pompeo, Attorney General Barr, FBI Director Ray, Secretary of State Pompeo. Do you think we're still unaware of the scale of the China challenge? Yes, we do. And what's worse is I think it has the danger of being politicized. I mean, this is the most important thing, um, you know, for the United States, period. We have to win this contest with China. And, and if we start to think that this is... Um, you know, an election thing or something like that. That's just not the case. I mean, Americans need to understand this. This is an existential problem. And, um, you know, we're just grasping the tip of the iceberg. 
Um, it's going to take, uh, you know, everything we've got to defeat this. Um, Dr. Ward, you're young. It. You're young. Yeah. You don't remember the 80s when I was working for Ronald Reagan in the White House. It, it, it cannot not become partisan. The nuclear freeze sure. movement was all about it being the United States' fault, not the USSR's fault. I think we're there again, where one party takes the CCP seriously and another party chooses not to. And academics like yourself, even very experienced academics with on-the-ground time, you don't want it to be partisan, but inevitably, it has to become partisan or it is not dealt with by Americans seriously. That may be true. I mean, I think you'll have different kinds of leadership here, but we have to find some unity around this issue. I mean, we, um, you know, fighting something of this on this scale, and by fighting, I mean beating them strategically. I mean, we have to maintain superior economic power. We have to do um, economic containment, cut off their uh, strategic industries, technologies, banks, you know, start going after their, their companies, doing all of that. We have to get the business community to be part of this fight. Um, you know, it's going to require a certain form, kind of national unity. We, we've just got to get this as Americans um, and, and start seeing past the differences in order to take on something of this scale. I agree. You're I'm right. just that not an optimist. I'm just not an optimist that you're getting enough traction. And I'm, I'm going to help you get some traction. And I hope everyone else does. But do you see other people paying attention to this issue in the way that they need to pay attention to the issue in the media generally? Uh, well, I, I spend time with Maria Bartiromo, and I think she certainly gets it. And, and um, you know, it, it's out there. It's out there, but not enough. Um, not enough. And it's, it's we have to, what really matters in my mind is uh, the only way to, to beat these guys is to win the economic contest. So and, and Pompeo brought this up in his speech. He talks about the CEOs. He talks about, um, you know, the, the, the companies that are engaged in China and, um, you know, even those that receive, you know, or participate in the human rights violations by, by extension. And uh, A.G. Barr talked about this. And, you know, we, we've got to get the business community. I mean, you know, this is how we won World War II. It's how we won the Cold War was industry and, and, and strategy, you know, and government working together. We're not doing that anymore unless we do that we will lose this contest. So um, my concern is that um, it's got to go broader to the American public. It's got to go out of the national security community where people do understand this. You know, the American people have to understand this and American business leaders um, and, and, you know, financiers have to understand this. We can't win this without them. We will lose. So, I, I so that's going to be a big, big shift. I need you to keep coming back and making more points about this. China's vision of victory is Dr. Ward's new book. You should get it. You should read it. You should actually memorize parts of it. It stays on my desk. Dr. Ward, thank you. Always a pleasure to have you and keep coming back. Uh, let me remind